ijambo ryabaga iryabatwa ryacu cyabaga iryacu nta wari tubiyengagamo ubwo badiri kabadiri ke byabo tacu cyabaga bitero ah tuhinda mebe hama iyo bihamege nge byabira kuza gabana bitu The bat were uh, hunter-gatherers, originally. Uh, they lived in this forest for time immemorial, until 1991, when the national parks were created, when the bat were completely, officially removed. The bat were not compensated. They were removed without prior informed consent. The government didn't plan to where this bat would be put. Aya, <laughs> Today, a younger gorilla will die, a bigger one will die. There is a flow of money coming in for burial of the gorilla. But a human being is really suffering, and nobody knows. There are about 800 mountain gorillas left in the world. Now that's a very tiny, precarious population. And they live in the Virunga volcanoes on the borders of Uganda, Rwanda and Congo, and in the windy forest in southern Uganda. Now these gorillas are very, very threatened. Uh, although the conservation is good, the habitat is tiny, and the biggest threat is therefore man. And tourism there is especially important. One of the most challenging things is to get the balance right between humans and wildlife. And traditionally in Africa, when parks have been created, the tendency in most parks has been to remove the people. And of course, it's something that's understandable, but I don't think is desirable. Uganda Wildlife Authority is a semi-autonomous body, government organization, that is mandated to protect and utilize sustainably wildlife and protected areas of Uganda. The battle pygmies were living formerly were living in the, the parks and uh, they were doing the hunting and the gathering. But uh, accidentally, the mountain gorillas uh, would land into the snares and then be maimed. And having gorilla tracking as a prime activity here, we saw that if they are left inside there, they continue the hunting and the gathering the setting of those snares. So that was the major reason why they were ousted and are now outside the park. Tourism started in 1992 with arbitration of one gorilla group. And the idea behind was tourism to meet the costs of conservation. If you go and see gorillas in Uganda, it's $500. And so tourism, obviously brings dollars, obviously brings pounds uh, and euros into this area, so that's great. But more than that, tourism can help build up the economic power of a community. The revenue that's generated from the park effectively goes up to Kampala and a small percentage stays here locally for the management of the Uganda Wildlife Authority. And a small percentage of that then is allocated to a community fund, which is never, ever, ever enough to really integrate the community into truly, genuinely benefiting from the conservation of the park. Right now, $5 from every permit sold is put aside. 15% of the five 
dollar go to fund the vulnerable groups, including the Batwa. Ah. So then, why you could? Are you under the cocoa? Je <laughs> <laughs> What we know across national parks in Africa is that tourism can be a very powerful link and a powerful platform to achieve that positive relationship between a national park and its local community. But I think we're all touched by real things in the end. Sometimes they're not very easy, sometimes we're disturbed by them, sometimes we're, we find them difficult to take. But I think they, they do help us understand why we made a journey kinship with humanity. I think that should be the essence of why you travel. It shouldn't be about luxury, it shouldn't be about wildlife, it shouldn't be about any of that. To my mind, that's part of it, yes. But the basic reality should be, it should strengthen your bond with humanity. A lot of people in this world are becoming a lot more conscious of and more fascinated with different cultures all over the world. And if there's opportunities there for people to experience the local community and the cultures on top of coming to see the gorillas, then um, I think there'll be a huge demand, but it's not quite in place yet. The community don't know what to offer the tourists and how to deliver it. And the tourists don't know that there's anything else on offer. So they literally fly and fly out for a day, come and see the gorillas and then go off on their other tour across Uganda. A lot of this is about simple economics. If we bring tourists to our lodge at Gahinga and we bring the Batwa to share their experience with them, the Batwa paid for this. Chondi kutekeleza, tabu na vugango zali tazi hindu ke, kuko no vugazi riho zira tuyovu. Aliko no vugazi tuyovu razi tuyovu razi duka nda gira ho zida shau yango tu na tu tu zaba bate geti inhaba ndi. Hano mu nukwa ngo haria mahoro changu bup. I can't guarantee that the government will compensate them, but it's the but one wish and need and demand. Jebiramba was a convoco and Vinchira Murgurwa Ruguanje, Taralu Hero in the Shaka or Kain Haragui Vanyamo, Nom Vababa Yakon Kabrona, Rigra Kuki Hugu, Gifitabaki and Rena Bobampe Moya Mashama. struck by how wealth and power have shaped every aspect of our response to this crisis. And not all